Hi. Nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you too. I'm Francesco. Nice to meet I'm you. I'm Alanya. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. I'm, I'm Stefano. I'm Francesco. So you have been abroad for the ETH Dog Mobility Fellowship too, yes, right? Yes, I've been abroad to Oxford um, at Nuffield College. I was actually also in the UK at the University of Cambridge. <gasps> so at the competitors. <laughs> I have uh, decided to split my stay into two periods and uh, the first period was last semester and was at the University of Vienna oh, and uh, the next period will be next semester, three months at the University of Hawaii. Mm. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> now we are all jealous. <laughs> <laughs> what was different from ETH? So at Nuffield College, which is very nice, they have a very large community of political science and as some of you may know, political science at ETH is not like the main focus of ETH. We have social sciences, but they are not so such a large department. Mm -hmm. And so it was very, very nice to have like so many different experts in the field. So I was very lucky to have some people who have worked directly on the topic I have I'm working on now in my PhD thesis, which was like very excellent and having like this kind of exchange, having like very specific expert feedback was very helpful. Yeah. So yeah, how yeah, was for it? me it was actually very similar because here at ETH and my group, they are all experts in X-ray physics and imaging, but they are not really um, experts on um, machine learning based regularization, mm -hmm. which is the topic I'm working on. So therefore I contacted the group in Cambridge and yeah, working with them was really, really, really helpful. And also what I really liked about Cambridge is this fact that it's a university made up of colleges, which is pretty yes. different from ETH, right? Because exactly. here you have just one big university and there you have like 30 colleges with 30 different traditions. And exactly. it was very, very interesting to see. So mm. what were the differences between like Vienna mm. and ETH Zurich? The main difference that I picked up is that uh, the department was smaller, mm -hmm. uh, so uh, maybe the opposite of what you experienced. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so at ETH the department is very big, which is uh, um, and also the geometry group is very big, which is uh, you know very nice and very stimulating. But uh, um, when uh, when arriving there and finding a smaller department, uh, it, it somehow uh, the conversations became. Uh, much, uh, much more, um, uh, you know, deep sometimes mm -hmm. because since you were you were talking with the same people yeah. uh, uh, over and over again, you got to know really well what the other people were up to, which is something that at ETH is a bit difficult because you yes. know, have so many people <laughs> that do so many things, it's hard to uh, actually go in depth with uh, with m most people. So, what was the biggest challenge you faced when going uh, to Vienna? Uh, so I, I guess that the biggest uh, challenges were uh, mostly uh, socially because it, um, uh, I mean, I sort of arrived in this uh, new city a bit post-COVID, so maybe people were not uh, so up to uh, going uh, going out again. So it, it demanded a lot of initiative that uh, maybe, you know, when you switch from, when you always have your group of friends that move, uh, uh, that have a similar path as you, you it requires a lot less uh, active effort to, you know, to engage socially. But it, uh, you know, it, and it was a uh, very, um, like, fun to uh, try to do that again. Yeah, for me the biggest challenge was definitely going to a math department because mm -hmm. I'm not a mathematician at all. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the beginning it was pretty difficult to, to grasp what they were talking about at the, in the meetings. I, I, yeah, it was just quite difficult mm -hmm. in the beginning. And, and, and as you said, like in the beginning, getting to know the people, it's uh, yeah, you sometimes have to go to awkward mm -hmm. conversations, uh, just uh, jump into the conversation mm -hmm. and stuff like that. You really get into a new context. For example, the UK is very, very different to Switzerland. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> And you, for example, you can see like much more inequality in the UK, which was also, yeah. I mean, like also changes your perspective on like real life politics, which is also for me as a political scientist, very influential to also see the countries you're studying. I think it uh, going abroad really gives some perspective on, on your work, on your life in general. It, uh, it really allows you to, let's say, I think develop a clearer sense of who you are, what your ambitions are, what do you want to achieve in your life. Um, yeah, which is more difficult if you always stay at the same place, you kind of get into your small world and you don't really see yourself in, in a more global picture and I think it, for that the dog mobility really, really helped. I, uh, I think that the thing that en enriched me the most was uh, uh, working uh, uh, in a bit of a smaller um, the, the group. Uh, but then the collaboration was more intense and even the sort of informal math chats 
uh, were a lot more informed because I was much more aware of what other people were up to. Colleges can be very, very expensive. Mm -hmm. Like um, staying in the UK, being at this high-ranking universities, you still kind of have to pay college fees. Yeah. And especially if, like for students which are not so well endowed and do not come from like very privileged backgrounds, I think like this is also uh, one of the most amazing advantages because it covers this college fee, mm -hmm. so you can really apply everywhere where you really want to go. Yeah. <laughs> especially, like, for example, to Hawaii. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I think like this is why I would really recommend like, ETH, Doc Mobility.